the same time, you know, understand, you know, the mission in a, 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 a proper sense. Among other things discussed by the two generals was the difficulties incurred by troops traveling to El Fasha, which their concord must be sorted out at least at military level. The police commissioner of UNAMID, James Opong Buano, also held talks with the CDS and delegation, an opportunity used by Buano to appreciate the progressive participation of the Gambian police in peace support operations, as well as highlight their role in Darfur. When they see a senior officer in leadership uh, material coming to visit, generally they know that if something happens, somebody is there to, uh, to, to, to speak on their behalf. The main highlight of the tedious day's activities was the CDS's meeting with the Gambian contingent, whose commander, Lieutenant Colonel Salifu Bojang, explained the importance of the visit as a source of concern and care for their welfare, as well as one that will significantly boost the morale of the Gambian population in Darfur. Their mandate is crucial to the success of the mission, and the men have never been found wanting in the execution of their mandate, he added. He, however, pointed to the lack of equipment as the key problem militating against their success in the mission area. It would be good if the Gambian Armed Forces can deploy contingent own vehicles, both heavy and light, including generators with a capacity of 75, kilo, 75 to 100 kilowatts. If nothing for else, we are losing a lot of money in terms of reimbursement. In his response, the Chief of Defense Staff expressed satisfaction with the level of patriotism and professionalism with which the troops execute their mandate, saying that they at the helm are aware of some of the problems hindering their operation and have gone pretty far in securing all the necessary equipment needed in the mission. We are cognizant of the fact that the mission is not only helping individuals, but the mission is helping even the security institutions that we have in the country. We are preparing everything that this contingent would need to stay in the mission area and even to, to, to add our numbers if we are allowed to. The Deputy Permanent Secretary Minister of Defense, Ablaika, and Gambian expatriate Landin Tatin Baji both spoke on the need to maintain the good name of the country in the war torn region, adding that the Gambian government will do its utmost to fulfill its side of the bargain. Our expectations have been met. Talking to various uh, senior officials here and hearing the commendation they have made and testify on GAMCOI 13 makes me very proud to be part of the Gambia Armed Forces. I assure you, whilst at home, focus on your policies and support, but for the welfare of the men, we are here. Later in the evening, the city has held similar meetings with the civilian police community in Davo, as well as government expatriates working with the UNAMID. To them also, he emphasized the need to put the country first in all endeavors and to collaborate with their brothers and sisters in the troubled region, especially when the going gets tough. Abu Bakr Dabo, GRTS. We'll take our first break. Stay tuned. Do you know with only $100 C scratch card or Nopal you can win your dream home? Kergi! Yaiborom! What? You mean this magnificent house? Yes! It's possible. Just load $100 C scratch card or Nopal to win your dream home. Fully equipped furniture. Not only that, but every two weeks you can win beautiful sofas. Bedroom sets make your dream come true. Load hundred dollars is card card or no power. Cause the more you load, the better your chances are. Kirgi, Yaiboro. It's only possible with your national GSM provider. Gamsel, Yaiboro. Welcome back. Authorities in Mauritania say they are examining a request made by Libya for the extradition of arrested former Libyan intelligence chief Abdel Al Sanusi. A Libyan delegation that traveled to the West African state returned to Tripoli, leaving behind the international fugitive. And PAIGC's leading candidate, Carlos Gomez Jr., is expected to face off against former President Kumbayala in a runoff vote after the first round failed to produce an outright winner. We have details of that story and order in this roundup. Mauritania is continuing to examine requests for the extradition of Abdullah al-Sunusi, Libya's former intelligence chief. 
Rockshot says it will follow all the proper procedures before taking the decision. According to the Libyan government spokesman, Mauritania had agreed to extradite Sanusi for trial for murder and human rights abuses, but a Libyan delegation to Mauritania returned to Tripoli empty-handed. Abdullah al sanusi is also wanted by France and the International Criminal Court. In Niger, the government has announced the arrest of a former Tuareg leader, Aghali Alambo. Aghali Alambo was the leader of the MNJ rebellion between 2007 and 2009. He's suspected of smuggling arms and explosives from Libya. Aghali Alambo lived in Libya and returned to Niger in 2011 with a number of Libyan army leaders after the fall of Muammar Gaddafi's regime. Guinea-Bissau's former Prime Minister, Carlos Gomez, narrowly missed a first-round election win and will face ex-president Kumba Yala in a runoff vote on April 22nd. However, Kumba Yala and four other opposition candidates want the poll annulled, saying it was riddled with fraud. There are now fears of violence in Guinea-Bissau, which has been plagued by violence and coups for decades. The African Union and ECOWAS say the election was free and fair. The president of South Sudan, Salva Kiir, is on an official Europe visit to Brussels, influence. where he is meeting with top we European Union officials to strengthen economic and political ties. The president of South Sudan is also discussing a dispute with neighboring Sudan over oil production and transit. He also talks about assisting 100,000 Sudanese displaced by ethnic conflicts. The gunman suspected of killing four people at a Jewish school on Monday is holed up in a Toulouse neighborhood, starting a lengthy standoff with French police. According to French authorities, the suspect is a known follower of a group linked to Al-Qaeda. Mohamed Mera is believed to be a French of Algerian descent and has been on French police list of terror suspects. We have details of the story in this report. On Wednesday afternoon, the suspected killer in Toulouse and Montauban was still barricaded in his apartment and surrounded by police. Since 3 a.m., French police have been negotiating with the presumed killer of three French soldiers, a rabbi, and three Jewish children. At one point, the suspect opened fire, wounding several officers. Police gave the suspect an ultimatum. He had promised to turn himself in by the afternoon. The man has been identified as Mohamed Mera, a 24-year-old Frenchman of Algerian origin who had been part of a radical Muslim group. He claims to belong to Al-Qaeda. He wanted to avenge Palestinian children. It was discovered that in 2010 and 2011, Mera had visited Afghanistan and Pakistan, where he trained in Islamist military camps. His name was included on a list of radical Muslims in Toulouse. The group to which he belonged was banned by the French government last month. The turning point came when police traced his scooter from an email exchange with the first victim who had advertised a scooter online. The motivations for the crime, revenge for the death of Palestinian children and France's military engagement in Afghanistan, risk stirring up racist and anti-Muslim sentiments in France. President Sarkozy has moved quickly to defuse tensions. We must not allow ourselves to succumb to confounding different issues or to vengeance. Faced with such an event, France cannot be great unless it stands unified. Late on Wednesday, Mr. Marat had still not turned himself in. France's largest Jewish association said it believed that the suspect had been preparing a new attack that morning. And before we go, a reminder of our headlines. President Jammeh has commenced the treatment of the seventh batch of HIV AIDS patients, numbering 69. The Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Masa Anakinte, has assured Gambian peacekeepers in Darfur of government's commitment to meeting their material requirements. PAIGC candidate Carlos Gomez Jr. is set to face off with former Bissau Guinean President Kumbayala in a runoff election after the first round of voting failed to produce an outright winner. And police in France have cornered a French citizen of Algerian extraction believed to be behind the spate of deadly shootings in the city of Toulouse. You can also follow that story and other JATES programs live on our website at www.jates.gm. There you can also monitor JATES Radio Live. That brings us to the end of the news. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and enjoy a range of interesting programs.